Fisheries is like a Jenga puzzle. You pull one piece, maybe it gets a little wobbly. You pull another piece, the whole thing topples down. My name is Christina Parker. I am the president for the California and Nevada American Fisheries Society chapter. I'm also um, an employee. I work for the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. I'm the statewide native fishes coordinator. I love working in fishery science for a lot of reasons. I think when you first get into fisheries, you're like, yeah, I like being outside. And then as I kind of progressed in my fisheries career, I developed a better understanding of all of the biodiversity around me and this appreciation for sort of uncharismatic, less loved fish. And now I really love that I sort of am a voice for species that are otherwise unseen under the water or unnoticed by the general public. There are 115 or 130 native fishes in California, and we estimate that about 81% of those are in decline. Part of that is that we have these big, you know, drought cycles and then a really big wet year. And so we'll alternate between those and we have this big swing. And though species in California are adapted to swing, they're not adapted to quite this extreme. And so we have a lot of rescues that have to happen because fish get stranded in certain creeks and rivers where it maybe you know, historically was continuously flowing, but now it's not. We have a lot of climate change impacts in California and we have a really high biodiversity and all the fish react to it differently. So it's an interesting challenge. When we have an emergency situation where fish may be stranded somewhere, we have a whole internal process we go through to evaluate whether or not those species, that species um, will survive a move, whether or not there's some place safe to put them, whether or not we might accidentally move pathogens. We have all of these techniques we've learned and what's successful and not. And we also use it for reintroducing species. So if we have an area that should have a particular species and we have some place we can collect some genetically similar species, we may use this translocation process to reintroduce to an area where they might have more climate resilience, for example. But um, it's a really interesting and very fun aspect of my job to be able to like go collect fish and repopulate a stream that has cool spring fed water that's gonna do better in the face of climate change than some of the downstream reaches that the fish were caught in. I have to be hopeful that we can have a positive impact. We like to challenge ourselves to take on the more challenging native fish problems. So we look at those as opportunities. We have to move forward through them. I personally would never wanna abandon a species and say, we can't do anything positive to help this. So I always have to look at things optimistically and hope that going down the road at some point our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren will see that we did everything we could. And for me to do that, I have to be hopeful. <laughs>